I know you could instantly recognize this as being cerebellum. There's absolutely nothing else in the whole body that looks like this. This is cerebellum. If you didn't instantly recognize it as cerebellum, I guarantee you, you have probably were struggling tremendously with the rest of these 550 videos. Um, like the brain, the cerebellum has gray matter and white matter. The gray matter are predominantly neurons and cells, and the white matter is white because it's primarily myelinated fibers. And if you remember in the brain, which includes a cerebrum, cerebellum, the gray matter's on the outside, the white matter's on the inside. In the spinal cord, it's the other way around, isn't it? The white matter or myelinated ascending and descending tracts are on the outside, and the gray matter, uh, dorsal and ventral horns are on the inside. This is absolutely classical cerebellum, but it's not normal cerebellum. And I'll tell you why. The concept of demyelinization or defective myelinization or absent myelinization is a very, very, very common concept uh, secondary to many, many, many nonspecific uh, CNS diseases of which multiple sclerosis family is the biggest single variety, but demyelinization occurs anywhere. In this type of disease, you could instantly see that the uh, white matter is whiter than it should be in some areas, or let's say less pink here relative to here because of demyelinization, or perhaps the best word would be defective myelinization, abnormal myelinization. This is the family of what we call the leukodystrophies. And leuko means white, so it means that the myelin here will be whiter than it should be. And dys means abnormal, and trophy means growth. The leukodystrophies are a family of at least nine or ten or eight um, genetic diseases in which the myelin fails to develop properly for one precisely logical biochemical genetic reason or another. This case happens to be an adrenal leukodystrophy, and of course it happens to be the cerebellum. And as you might guess, certain dystrophies affect certain areas more than others. But the bottom line is, whenever you are looking at myelin anywhere in the central nervous system, uh, and it is not, it is in areas lighter than it should be, you can uh, suspect that there was abnormal myelinization. In this case, they're all hereditary. And I'm going to give you a quick little chart here, which I made myself for my class, uh, of the family, the common names for the various leukodystrophies. This is the thing you kind of remember once and forget the rest of your life. And uh, whenever I've heard the word Polizzi, it's Merz Barker, for example, it's always been in a conference. I never saw a case of this. I've never actually seen a case of any of these, hardly. So if you hear Crabs disease or metachromatic leukodystrophy or adreno leukodystrophy, which this particular case is, or Polizius Merzbacher disease or Canavan disease, you're talking about the family of defective myelinizations of the white matter of myelin in the brain, which are all genetic diseases. And the defectiveness you could see. In this area, you have a fairly or less severe amount of abnormal myelinizations throughout here. There's a lot of irregular things. You see vacuoles uh, bigger than they should be. Uh, that's just defective abnormal myelinization, which all the leukodystrophies are. And this particular one is one of the more common ones. Actually, they're all rare, but one of the more common ones you might hear of specifically as adrenal leukodystrophy. And I thank you very much.